If you like the content on this channel, please consider subscribing and becoming a member today. <laughs> Quick shout out to longtime Mondo crew and new channel members, Jacob and Kirby. I can't thank you guys enough for not only enjoying the content produced here, but also helping us create new Dragon Ball content like Dragon Ball Infinity. For anyone else that would like to contribute, just click that membership button below this video. Alternatively, there's a Patreon link in the description as well. All the money goes directly towards the animators, the voice artists, and so, so far away from my own wallet that could totally use it right now. But if that kind of support isn't your thing, if you could just leave a like on each video you enjoy, it'll help out just as much in the long run. Sponsored by Miles Kirby! Asking how it's going, Koku is finally introduced to Nail and Ao. Questioning what school he comes from, Koku recognizes these two from the stories the others told, knowing they're on the same side, so to speak, before going back to his default personality, confidently stating, And before you ask, my name's Koku, disciple of the famous Master Yamcha. And Ao is a little put off by his enthusiasm, but leveling with them admits they are all proud of their masters. But he has a little advice for the desert student. Be wary of the guy behind them singling out Ooh, explaining he's not just anyone's pupil. But laughing nervously, Koku announces it doesn't matter who trained him, because Yamcha is the best. Alas, Ao doesn't want to argue, merely chuckling that he guesses the best will win. Over a megaphone, an official welcomes everybody to the 29th Tenkaichi Budokai, reminding the rules of this year's contest have been changed by Mr. Satan, and that all fighters will be working as a two-warrior team. And even more surprises are in store later down the road, First things first, all participants will be given a lot number for the preliminary elimination round. As this is done, Goku notes he didn't believe the new rules would lure so many newcomers, whose ideas are complimented by his granddaughter. Dismissing the others, Vegeta states only their group will make it past the preliminaries. So in the end, it doesn't matter how many others showed up. But ever hopeful, our hero won't count all of them out quite yet. After all, every tournament they've entered previously has held its surprises. To which Pan agrees. Having just met Koku's sister, it's almost a certainty she'll be traveling with others. The official begins to shout once more, beckoning the first two teams from Group 1 for the first fight. Turns out, that's Brawl and Vegeta, grabbing her father to usher him to the stage with her. He refuses, not willing to demean himself by facing such pitiful opponents. Questioning what she's supposed to do then, fight the pair alone? Not just that, but the Saiyan demands she has both of them on the ground in under 30 seconds or he himself will remove her from that ring, which Brawl isn't exactly on board with. The official calls her again to the fighting area or she will be disqualified. Psyching herself up, she resolves to her fate. Entering, her opponent may have a bit of reach on her. As the battle begins, looking down on her, he's confused, inquiring if she's fighting alone. The girl merely spouts she doesn't have time to explain herself, apologizing. Gazing at the much smaller fighter, she asks if that was their teammate, who meekly stutters, it depends. With a stern face, Brawl warns that they have five seconds to give up. Otherwise, things will end much worse for them than they did their partner. Which works, as the remaining fighter cries their forfeiture, bringing a smile to her father's face as she's announced the winner. And just like that, the preliminaries began. Bearing little effort, our heroes take down fighter after fighter. But against all odds, a very unexpected adversary awaits Pan. So, we beat again. Filled with joy to find Mr. Log here in the tournament, asking how he's been. Her father questions how they know each other. But it would seem Pan's warm feelings aren't mutual. As the block of wood spouts, he's trained for months to seek his revenge for what her and her family have done to his. And for her to not try and remedy the past with her kind words. Let's go! As easily as ever, Pan knocks out Mr. Log cold, kneeling before him suggesting he keep training. But to his credit, at least he didn't shatter into pieces like last time. With that out of the way, Gohan believes the match to be over, but the official points him in the direction of the remaining fighter, which is… some poo from Penguin Village. Though he assures Gohan he has no plans to fight, this was only part of Mr. Log's training, much to his relief, as they are officially declared the winners. While Pan celebrates the easy victory, Vegeta is up to his grumpy ways, calling all these fake warriors an insult, catching Goku's attention, who assures him to just wait. He has a good feeling about what lies ahead. And with uncanny timing, 
It would seem Shen has temporarily returned from Otherworld to accompany the Red Ribbon School. Breaking the silence, he states he believes he sees a few familiar faces. Tian taking a special interest in the Crane Master's presence. Calling his former student a traitor, he informs the gang they just came from the building next door, having passed their preliminary match. However, alerting the Z Fighters of their participation is the least of their concern. His true interest lies within the famous Koku, who he had met previously, who screams at the group, having joined a thief, they are no better than thieves themselves, demanding his sister deal reparations for his stolen pendant. But she only calls her brother a fool, questioning what exactly he knows about her pendant, not even giving him a chance. She furthers by stating he's aware of nothing, or at best, he has just recently found out he is related to the Saiyans of the Sacred Wolf. As for the abilities of this pendant, she claims Koku couldn't even hope to grasp at such power, reiterating he and the others are doomed, and the pendant that Pan holds will be theirs eventually. But they should know, they are not Red Ribbon's targets for this tournament. Vegeta saying what we may be thinking, and that she seems rather well informed for a child. The new old guy speaks up, thanking Dr. Jiro. Because of him, they are aware the Z Fighters were only able to defeat him with the aid of an ally that could manipulate time. This new iteration of Red Ribbon plans to rebuild their army and master that technology, further telling our heroes the present timeline is now written, frozen, believing this to be the Infinity Principle. Butting in, Chen tells them this is all the info they will offer for free. If they wish to know anything further, they will have to defeat them in the tournament. But at least now, the gang is a little more informed. With that, the Red Ribbon School walks off. I hate her! Yamcha urging a student to calm himself reminding the boy they'll get their opportunity to face them in the ring, who quickly changes his attitude, thanking his master for keeping him zen. But something isn't sitting well with the prince, telling Goku that this little Koku intrigues him, desiring more information on these Saiyan variants. But Goku himself doesn't even want to think about all that for the moment, insisting everything in time. But for now, it'd be better to focus on the Tenkaichi Budokai. It's gonna be fun! Not long later, everybody would draw their lot numbers for the first round, 16 teams in total. The old announcer welcoming the audience to the 29th World Tournament, with the first round soon to begin. Joining Goten and Trunks in the stands, where they read through the matches to come. Looks like the first round is Vegeta and Brawl, and they'll be going up against Tien and Lily. When someone shouts after the boys, looking over, it seems like Bulma has changed up her hair a bit, asking the two if they really thought she was going to miss her daughter fighting. Squeezing her way in, she questions how they feel about her chances. But with a stern face, Trunks isn't too sure. Brawl has improved during her training, but after attaining a certain state, he's a little worried. Requesting he explain, Goten chimes in his own story, as Goku told him. A transformation eerily similar happened with Oob at the same time, and something may be awry. Causing Bulma to admit, matter-of-factly, she was recently able to find more pendants. But interrupting, the announcer calls forth the fighters to the stage, ushering the audience to cheer for their brave participants. On the left, Vegeta and his daughter Brawl. The right, Ten Shinhan and his daughter Lily. An exciting matchup featuring two families going head to head. With no further delay, they're instructed to begin the match. Tian questioning if he doesn't even deserve Vegeta to be on guard. The cocky prince only smirks. Looking towards his daughter, he tells her to take the kid and he'll get the other. And judging by the look on her face, she has indeed finally inherited her father's love of battle. Staring intensely at her foe, Lily knows she can't allow them to call the shots in this fight. Tian quietly urges her to get ready, before. As the battle quickly goes airborne, Brawl compliments her friend on her improvement. As previously, her blue-haired personality couldn't even stand battle, very similar to Brawl herself before arriving to train with Kami Senen. But while Lily embraces the kind words, she tells Brawl her father puts too much faith in her. The announcer commenting on how spectacular this new generation is. Vegeta merely spectates from below, shorting to Tien that Lily won't last very long. She expends too much energy too quickly. Though the other warrior feels quite different, stating he underestimates her abilities. Regardless, he should be focusing on his opponent. Scoffing at the notion, the prince inquires if this measly human believes he can stand up to the power of a Saiyan. But rather than explain his training, Tian would prefer to answer that question with one of his own. Since when do humans have three eyes?
caught off guard. Vegeta bites, getting his attention and curiosity. He demands Tien explain, as he was always under the belief he was indeed an Earthling. However, the mysterious three-eyed warrior refuses to go into detail now, as this is a place of battle. Though now that Vegeta knows better, it's time to show his true power. In the audience, Krillin questions Shoutsu if he's aware of what he's talking about, who thinks for just a moment. Detailing that Tien's telepathic abilities are extremely well developed, he recently made contact with his people. Inquiring to who his people are, his longtime friend doesn't know, as that is all he made clear. Though after he did so, he entered the room of spirit and time for an entire day. Upon emerging, he had obtained a new transformation. Excited to see how he will now fare against someone like Vegeta. Powering up to this alleged transformation, the prince happily realizes he may be more of a challenge than previously thought, as the entire crowd looks on in awe at the power of this heightened state. What further surprises will the tournament show?